Let me start with a general observation that there has been enormous progress in biomedical research and clinical medicine over the last few decades, and this is due to two main factors. One is the enormous advances in molecular biology and genetics, but hand in hand with this really goes what can only be described as a revolution in biomedical imaging. Cardiac imaging really is the bread and butter of what a cardiologist does day in and day out. In fact, almost every patient we see at the John Ratcliffe Hospital will have some form of heart imaging at some point. And so most recently, two very advanced techniques have been developed. One is called cardiac magnetic resonance imaging, or CMR, and another one, cardiac computed tomography imaging, or CCT. And if you compare these new imaging techniques, it's immediately evident that the CMR technique is by far the most versatile, and it allows us to look at all kinds of different aspects of the heart, as different as its structure, its function, its blood supply, for example, the valves, or even things like the oxygen levels in the heart, or various aspects of its metabolism, or the chemical molecules in the heart. And this is why we've made a major investment into cardiac MR and in 2001 founded the University of Oxford Center for Clinical Magnetic Resonance Research. Now let me show you some examples of what our images look like. This is what we call long axis. And here you see a short axis view. Uh, the chamber blood is shown in white. The heart muscle itself is much darker. This is the main pumping chamber, the left ventricle. This is the right pumping chamber or right ventricle, these are the filling chambers. It's apparent that these images give us an unprecedented amount of detail on both the global function of the heart but also on regional detail. And because these images are of such high quality, uh, they allow us uh, to make very precise measurements. This can now be done automatically with the help of computer programs. This is an example where the computer has identified and has created a model of the left and the right pumping chamber and their mass, and this sort of analysis then gives us very, very accurate measurements for our research studies. Another aspect we're interested in is the blood supply to the heart, and for this we flush an MR contrast agent into the heart. The effect of this contrast agent is that wherever it appears, the image turns much, much brighter. And here you can see how such a bolus of contrast, how it travels through the heart. And you can imagine that if you look at this ring of left ventricular myocardium, wherever there is a problem with the blood supply, these areas stay darker because the contrast arrival is delayed. Another question we often asked about is, how about patients who have very poorly pumping ventricles? Uh, is much of that heart muscle that contributes to this chamber actually alive so it has a chance to recover? Or has it actually died off after one or several heart attacks? And is it simply scarred and there's nothing you can do to change scar? With a special technique of infarct imaging, we can actually get images where any bits of heart muscle that are alive show up as black, and anything that's scarred and has died off is white. And I want to finish by showing you some latest technology that allows us to look at uh, how blood flows in the aorta in three-dimensional space. This is the example of a normal volunteer, and you can see how each one of these little particles that have been marked uh, flows roughly in the same direction and roughly with the same speed. This, on the other hand, is the example uh, of a subject who really only has uh, very mild changes in the aorta. We see that there are drastic changes in this three-dimensional flow profile with some bits moving much faster than others, and in fact, some actually going round in circles. But what we are currently trying to do is to understand how this flow pattern predicts which patients go on to develop clinically relevant disease of the aorta so we can start treating them early, and which patients will not develop any problems at all. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are many different insights into cardiovascular disease we can gain from magnetic resonance imaging studies and I hope I've been able to show you that this is a modern, state-of-the-art imaging tool for the heart that is playing an increasing role in our daily clinical practice.